Hello, Badass Crew. Welcome to Busted Knuckles. And my name's Steve Belair, and I'm your host. Then we've got a great show lined up for you this week. We're going to first go out to Headingway Sports Shop and help them celebrate their 50th anniversary. That's amazing. Then we're going to go to Morgan Cycle, and Adrian's going to winterize a bike for us, show us how that's done. Then we're going to go out to Harley Davidson in Winnipeg, and they're going to give us a shop tour. That's pretty awesome. And then uh, we're going to go to Uncle D's airbrushing class and watch the budding artists finish their masterpieces. So stick around, it's going to be a great show. Okay, so we're headed out to Headingley Sports Shop. Uh, it's their 50th anniversary. Let's check it out. <laughs> cycle now and uh, Adrian's going to winterize the bike show us how that's done that's uh, that's very interesting Unfortunately, this doesn't have a magnetic end on it, so we can't see if there's any swarf on it or violins or whatever. I know this motorcycle, the owner takes really good care of it, so we know its history. It's uh, a good runner, I doubt there's. Uh, Warrant, uh, 
Changes oil regularly and all that? Yeah, for sure. Where the oil filter is? Yes, sir. I can smell gasoline in the soil. Uh oh. Does look like pretty runny, eh? Mm -hmm. Doesn't look very thick. Stamp on the oil filters. November 16. And I believe we are missing a washer. Yes. I believe we're missing a washer. Yeah. Confirm, double confirm that. Okay, so the gas and the oil, that's a really bad thing, or is that just from flooding too many times? Well, the reason we don't know, but it's most definitely not a good thing. It uh, will wash the oil off the cylinder walls when it's running. So, poor carburation or ignition. Um, will allow fuel to get past the and enter the crank. So like uh, when you flood it because it's the carburetor is off or whatever and mm -hmm. every time you flood it you put a bunch of gas inside the oil, right? Yeah, that or... Seals are wrecked or... Well, if the motorcycles, um, if the carburetors aren't tuned very well, uh, you, you might not be flooding but you, you you're not burning all the gas yeah and it could be a combination of that or ignition like this motorcycle has looks like original plugs plug wires and caps. Oh. so and i believe these are these are sealed units on this motorcycle so you would have to replace the whole the whole unit the plugs do look new, but we will find out what that looks like after. What I'm going to do now is check to make sure that there's not a washer that belongs there. So I'm going to go over to my uh, microfiche and check that Check out. it out. Yeah. Oil cleaner. Yes, there is supposed to be a washer there. Here. And start draining this out. Um, normally I hook up the air to this, but it'll probably be pretty loud, so we'll just do it by hand. Oh, you have a hand pump for it? Or? Yeah, there's a hand pump for sure. it. You can do air as well, so. Oh, cool. For the sake of uh, noise. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right.
one. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> This stuff comes with a funnel and everything? Yeah. Actually, pardon me, the funnel's extra. Oh, is it? But uh, I throw them in. Ah. Yeah. Because you can't use a swell with the funnel. Getting real close to the top there. There we go. Full. Ah, right on. Okay. So now we're safe. No rust in the tank. No rust in the tank and no gummed up carburetors in the springs. Right on, man. Eh? You betcha. Is that the whole deal? That's pretty well the whole deal. Okay, so if somebody wants to have this done to their bike, they bring it to you, but how do they get it home? I'll pick up the motorcycle if need be, but I'll most certainly drop it off. Oh, is that right? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, so they don't have to drive it home with that stuff in there. No. I mean, it's okay to run it in there, um, but uh, it's so, it depends on the time of year. If you're going to ride right till it's, you know, going to snow, then uh, I'll be happy to pick up your bike and... Oh, okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yep. Yeah. So, Very figure nice. it out no matter what, we'll get you taken care of. Right on, man. You betcha. That's awesome. Yeah. Now we're going out to Harley Davidson Winnipeg and they're going to give us a behind the scenes tour to show us the whole shop and the whole everything. It's uh, it's very interesting. Kind of held some surprises for me. Alright so, as most people have seen the showroom here, all loaded up with bikes and if you come this way, kind of right behind you, we'll take the hallway back to the service department. There are sales offices, the boss's office. More of our offices there, accounting, customer lounge right here, which we always have a vintage bike sitting around there for something to look at. Harley Davidson. You should right. have you should have the TV here with busted knuckles running. Yeah, we'll have the office of it that that uh, gave to the boss. Yeah. <laughs> we got the service right up area here, so usually keep a couple brand new bikes in here, some customer bikes, you know, wait in line to get worked on. Yeah. A little bit of parts on display. Something to drool over while you're waiting. <laughs> That's right, yeah. We've got our service office there. All of our lifts here, so 
We usually have about four to five technicians on at all times, depending on the year. Wow, it's so clean in here. Yeah, we try to keep it clean. Yeah. This is our back warehouse. So this is where we stock a lot of our brand new bikes that um, oh, wow. we have duplicates. Uh, we have all this metal racking, and with our forklift, we can uh, we can store a lot of things up in here. And as you can see to the left here, we've got all of our brand, you know, brand new bikes still sitting in the crates here. And if we have wow. duplicates, we just keep them in the box and then open them up when when someone wants to purchase. Are these all new here? Uh, these are a mix of customer bikes. Um, some of our used inventory sits back here. Um, bikes, uh, auto pack things waiting for parts. So it's a, it's a mix of things back here. Oh, wow. And this is where our, our PDIs, or pre-delivery inspections, get done back here in their own separate area. So oh, when, that's when cool. When we uncrate the bike out of the box, um, this is where we have a specific technician that works right here. He does all the PDIs for the bikes, so make sure they're set up properly right out of the crate before we put them on the showroom floor or before we sell them. And a little bit of mild parts and accessory installations too back here. Nice. Yeah. Do some customized. Mm -hmm. And if we go oh, you have a trike lift. That is cool. Yep. Yeah, we always try to keep a couple of those available because obviously there's a lot of trikes in Manitoba now, so... We, we are getting older. This is our receiver door here, so if we get a lot of shipment to come through. Super shipper receiver does. All of our customer hold bins here, so whenever someone at the counter orders a part and it comes in, we always locate it to a specific bin here. That's all number coordinated, oh, wow. so, so that when someone comes to pick up their parts, we know where to, to find them typically. So. Oh wow! And over here, all of our parts are all kind of alphabetically in order. So again, they're every, every part in our system, like thousands and thousands of parts, they'll have their own location back here, so we know how to how to find everything pretty quickly. Wow. Now if we head up the stairs here, we'll take us to our pre-owned inventory area. A lot of people don't know we actually have an upstairs. I didn't know you had an upstairs. <laughs> so these are all they're all pre-owned bikes right here. A lot of people are surprised actually at how many bikes we have here because like wow. I said, a lot of people don't know upstairs exists here. So we try to keep all of our, you know, around town, you know, sportsters or soft hills, dinas in this area here. And yeah. then if we turn around over here, oh. we keep all of our, our touring bikes here. So we try to keep it a little bit organized. And Especially do people come up here shopping or? Yeah, yeah, we usually have to send them up with, a, with an employee here. Um, because it's not a very well secured area up here. There's so people are asking specifically for used. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we've got, uh, like I said, all of our touring bikes scattered throughout here. And there's always a good range in terms of price. This is age. crazy how many you have here. And they're just such beautiful bikes. Wow. People, people's jaws are going to drop. Yeah, yeah. And then this is a bunch of our you know, takeoff parts or old parts that uh, we have lying around, damaged parts or, you know, just stuff. Is that right, that, eh? That uh, no one really wants. So a lot of this stuff is actually, will be seen at our swap meets. Every year we have oh, our swap meet in the, the spring. So a lot of these parts will be displayed out there. All of our exhaust systems right there, all our brand new stock. Okay, yeah. Because exhaust is a very popular item that people want for their Harleys. Loud exhaust. Yeah, absolutely. So. Is that the most common common thing people buy yeah, for their bikes? I would say about 80% of people for sure put louder mufflers on their bikes. Before they even take them home? Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so. It's all about attitude. Yeah. This is... This is amazing. <laughs> and here we have back to the parts department right here. Right on. That's amazing, man. Thank you for that.
uh, we're going to go to Uncle D's airbrushing class and watch the budding artists finish their masterpieces. <laughs> You need white? Well, I can't put my paintings there with too black. So if they all I'll put it in later, no I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Just like this here, I painted everything in. I didn't, um, you know, mask my flowers out or anything like that. I just painted the whole thing in. And then at the end, which I do a lot sometimes, I take this is uh, my own mixture of just some white and gold and yellow put together, which makes an ivory color. And I like the I like the ivory color. Use it for lots of things, making things look antique and stuff. It's, it's really good. And then all you do, with your ivory color, you can just roughly sketch out where you want your flowers to go with the ivory color. I see sometimes, you know, you notice when you're doing masking, you're cutting stuff out, you can see all these lines, right? That's why it's important when you're cutting stuff out and using masking to have a really light touch when your blades be super sharp, which wasn't the case for you at the time. Um, and so that you don't leave these deep grooves in your thing. And so then when you paint over, you can still see all the cut lines. but. You can mask them out eventually. You gotta go back and forth with your black paint and your colors and go back and forth and it'll kind of mask them out a bit. But for the most part, you're still gonna see those lines running through your stuff. Um, and that, you know, and that's why you need to be either really light with your masking, or in my case, why well, I don't use masking at all. Because I don't want these lines, you know, running through and so I just paint them up and then I uh, or, of course, the other way is to meticulously make sure you draw out all your flowers ahead of time and don't paint over top of them. So those are your options. Either cut super light or mask them out or no masking at all. But that's why typically for the most part, for almost everything I do, I, I don't really use masking 
because I don't want lines going through and I just want to be able to freehand everything as I go along. And then I don't have to worry about these lines running through all the stuff. Uh, but in the meantime, this is all I do. I sketch it out with this. Take the yellow ochre and spray it all over what you just did. Well, I'm going to save some of this for you to do, but now I'll skip it to the next thing. And with this color, just like you did with the, the other, now you can detail. Now you detail your, your, your flowers up. Then, here's the magenta. a little bit more time, you know, obviously yeah. doing the stems and different things, but mm -hmm. it's basically all the same colors that, that you guys, mm -hmm. that I told you guys to use. It's just a matter of having patience and just detailing a little bit more, and then I go back and forth, right? I do yeah. the, I did the uh, the ivory and then the yellow ochre and then the, the detail with the darker color and spray yeah. some paints, but then I whiten it up and then I come back and do the ochre again and I go back and forth and build it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, until I got the desired effect that I wanted. Okay, so that was a lot of fun. Come back next week and uh, we'll do our best to give you another great show. Take care.